What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're checking out this big CPU cooler right here. This is the brand new Noctua NHD15 G2. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now there are actually three different versions of this cooler. We have the normal G2 version, but there's also an HBC version as well as an LBC version. HBC stands for high base convexity and it's specifically optimized for LGA 1700 processors, while LBC or low base convexity is specifically optimized for flat CPUs like AM5, AM4, LGA 2066 and LGA 2011. Now the normal G2 version of the cooler that we have here has the same medium base convexity as most other Noctua heatsinks. So it is gonna be a good all around cooler for all CPUs. As we take a first look at the cooler here, of course it is gonna be quite a large CPU cooler. I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions up on the screen like I always do. This is also gonna weigh in at 1,525 grams. Now, as far as the colorway, you're gonna get the default Noctua Brown colorway here on the fans and just silver heat sinks here. It's unclear if Noctua will be coming out with a Chromax black version. Now talking about this fans, right on the front of the cooler, we have our first fan and both fans on this cooler are gonna be the same and they're Noctua's NF A14X25R G2 PWM fans, which are 140 millimeter fans. These fans make use of an SSO2 bearing and will spin up to 1500 RPMs with a max airflow of 95.1 CFM in a max noise level of 24.8 TBA. As we move over to the side of the cooler, we can see that second fan, and of course, the dual tower design of the cooler. The fans themselves are held into place by simple fan clips, but these fan clips have been redesigned from previous versions. We can see that the fin stacks are slightly cut off at the bottom, so there's no clearance issues with memory or motherboard VRM cooling. At the back of the cooler, we get a better look at the asymmetrical fin stacks, these have also been redesigned, and since the new fans offer more performance, Noctua was able to reduce the fin spacing from 1.9 millimeters to 1.6 millimeters. That made it possible to integrate 23 extra fins and increase the total fin surface area by 20%. At the same time, the width of the front fin stack has been cut by 5 millimeters so that the loading is more balanced between the two fans. This cooler is actually smaller than the original NHD15. The top of the cooler keeps the very industrial look we know from Noctua with the tops of the heat pipes coming up through the top fins with just a simple Noctua logo on the top. Now try not to touch this section of the cooler as it's really a fingerprint magnet. Noctua has also increased the number of heat pipes from the original, so now you get eight instead of six. This of course is gonna give you increased thermal capacity. These heat pipes go up into each heatsink stack in a U fashion, which is pretty standard for dual tower CPU coolers. The base of the cooler is of course nickel plated copper. And again, we have the standard version of the cooler that has the same medium base convexity as other Noctua heatsinks. The base of the cooler has a very nice finish on it and we wouldn't expect anything less from Noctua. When it comes to installation, we're gonna be doing our installation here on an Intel Z490 system. So this installation should be pretty much the same across LGA 1200, 1150, 1151, and 1155 sockets. Now to start things off, go ahead and grab the back plate. We do need to install the bolts onto it with the included clip-on spacers. Refer to the installation guide on which holes you need to install the bolts in based on your processor. With the bolts secured on the back plate, go ahead and attach it to the back of your motherboard, threading the bolts through the holes in your motherboard. Flip your motherboard over and install the plastic spacers over the bolts. There are two different types of spacers which are color coded. Again, refer to the installation guide to see which ones you should use based on your processor. With the spacers installed, go ahead and install the Intel mounting bars on the top and bottom of the socket and secure them with the included thumb screws. Remove the fans from the cooler, apply the included thermal paste, and then carefully place the cooler on top of your CPU, lining up the pegs and the mounting bars with the screws on the cooler itself. Using the included Torx screwdriver, tighten the screws on each side to secure the cooler. Reinstall your fans and be sure to connect them to the included Y connector and then plug that Y connector into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. 
Now you may need to move that front fan up just a little bit to fit over your memory. I had to in my case. I also found it a bit weird that Noctua changed from just like a normal screwdriver to a Torx screwdriver. While it's nice that they do include it with everything, if you lose it, it's highly likely that you're not gonna have another Torx screwdriver. When it comes to testing, we're gonna be testing both temperatures and noise levels. So here's a full breakdown of our test system. As we come to the end here, as expected, this cooler sits at the top of our test results. It's one of the best performing air coolers that we've tested all year. And it's not only gonna compete against other air coolers, but it's also gonna compete against all-in-one liquid cooling solutions. Now to get it out of the way, there were some reports of rattling with this cooler. Of course, our test unit didn't have any of those issues but Noctua has already put out a statement and they're gonna replace any of the defective units. So good on them for doing that. But again, no issues with our sample. And when it comes to noise, this has the same noise profile as what you would expect from a larger dual tower, dual fan CPU cooler. It's not that loud in my opinion. Um, and then when it comes to installation, extremely easy. If you installed a Noctua cooler in the past, this is very much the same and extremely easy to go ahead and get installed. The only issue that I saw was they changed the, the screwdriver from like a normal one to a Torx screwdriver for some reason. Um, it's just not as common. And if you lose it, you're probably gonna have to go out to the store and get another one because most people don't have a Torx screwdriver. They have a normal screwdriver. So I just found that a bit odd. Also, you have to kind of give it to Noctua for the color here. We all know the Noctua color, the brown, you hate it, you love it. And at least currently there's no Chromax black version. And in the world of aquarium style cases, RGB, no plans, at least that I know of for any other color designs of this cooler. You're gonna get it in the Noctua brown, hate it or love it, that's what you're getting currently. So that could be a pro, that could be a con depending on, you know, uh, if you like the color or not. And then the last thing, and I think the most important thing is that this cooler is so expensive. It is $150. That sets a new level for pricing on air coolers. I, I think it's too expensive. All the other air coolers that were within one degree of this cooler in our testing are $100. I think that was, that was the benchmark. Every high-end air cooler is gonna be like 100. Some of the Noctua's were 120. I think this one should be 120. It should not be 150. I think that's the downfall. Even though this is such an awesome cooler and everything like that, the price is what holds it back for me. At $150, one, you could get another great air cooler for $100 and spend your money elsewhere. You can also get so many great all-in-one liquid cooling solutions that are around $150, sometimes even less, and open up all this space. You know, this is gonna cover your RGB memory and everything like that. And an AIO, of course, is going to have all this open so you can show off the lighting on your memory and on your motherboard and all that other stuff. So definitely something to keep in mind. I think it is an excellent CPU cooler. It's just priced a little bit too high. But go ahead and let me know in the comments what you think of this cooler. And if you did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.